Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'm working with you step by step through the ABRSM theory grades. We're now progressing through the last paper, paper S, in this 2016 booklet of grade 4 past papers. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets. You can download those in US letter or A4 and they'll accompany each step of this series. There's also a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also access information about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide book, How to Take Your ABRSM Music Theory Exam. It's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for the exam and also how to best make use of the time when you're in the exam room. So if you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find it all there. If you can give me a like, that'd be really great. That'd be encouraging to me. And please subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more in store. And so if you'll turn with me to page 22, we're going to continue with this specimen paper. It's called specimen because it was never set as an actual exam paper. It's just included as an extra example for you. So we're going to continue with question three now. And all of the music, all of the questions, sorry, on this page relate to this music here. A little extract from a piece by Mozart. And so I hope you've had a go of this already. It's much better to try and learn by your mistakes. Always, always write in pencil. So it doesn't matter if you go wrong. Now, the first question are some performance directions. And if you remember, in the new paper, in the new sort of syllabus layout, these will be presented in multiple choice. But it's good to go ahead and answer these. It's a good um, revision exercise. So Cantabile, this uh, first appeared way back in grade one. And that means in a singing style or in a singing manner. Okay, FP um, literally means what it says, forte piano, which is loud and then immediately soft. A sudden dynamic change. Okay, let's see what the next one says. Okay, complete the following statement. The triplet, which we see in bar 5, means three demi semiquavers in the time of and it's always three in the time of two a triplet is so just to be completely accurate you'd say in the time of two demi semiquavers or two thirty second notes demi semi quavers or you could say thirty second notes whichever terminology you prefer to use. Righty ho, name the two ornaments marked A in bar 5 and B in bar 6. So let's have a look. So A, now that's um, an appoggiatura, not to be confused with the acciacciatura or the grace note which has got a little line through it. It's sort of a crush note when it's got a little line through it. This is an appoggiatura where you share the value between the two equally. Uh, you spell that with double P, double G. And then B, nice and easy, a trill. Lots of alternating notes there. That's that one. Okie dokie, we're cracking on through these. Give the technical names, so we're looking for words like tonic, supertonic, mediant and so on, dominant, of the two notes in bar 4 marked X and Y. So X and Y. Now very generously they've told us that the key is F major, so we know that F is the tonic, so we need to count the intervals and then give them the technical name. So this is an E, so if you count backwards, 8, 7... We know that that's the leading note. 7 is the leading note, so we'll just mark 7 there for now. And then this next one is G. So if we count from F, 1, 2, that's the second. And so that would be the supertonic. Super meaning above the tonic. 
So the E is the leading note, so that's um, X question, so that's the leading note because it leads to the tonic, it always rises to the tonic in harmony. And then uh, the second one is a second, which is a supertonic because it's above the tonic. There we go. In how many complete bars can all the notes of the tonic triad of F major be found? The tonic triad, if you remember, is built, a triad is built of the first, the third, and the fifth. So F is the first, that's the tonic, F, G, A, B, C, F, A, C. So we're looking for how many complete bars all of those notes can be found. So let's have a look. So we've got an A, an F and a C straight away. So yes, that's um, there. Here we've got a C, an A and an F. Yep. That one's got them all in. Here we've got an A, A, C, but there's no F, so that one won't do. Let's carry on. We've got an F, there's an A, there's a C, so yes. A, F, C, so yes. It doesn't have to be in that particular order as long as the notes are all there. So that's not a complete bar, so we don't count that. So we've got one, two, three, four bars. So there's our answer, number four. And so, rewrite bar two using notes of twice the value. Remember to include the new time signature. So let's look at what we've got at the moment. Let's deal with the time signature first of all. So here we're in three, four, three quarter notes or three crotchet beats. So that's what we've got at the moment. You never change the top number. So to double the value, we need three beats and a bar, but instead of quarter notes, we go to half notes or minims. So the time signature that represents that is three over two. So that's the thinking done now. We've just got to um, double the note values. So bar two is this one here. And so to double the note values, to make them twice the value, so we'll lose the beam. So this one will become a dotted crotchet or a dotted quarter note. And because we lose the beam, these will become semiquavers or sixteenth notes, so on. And so here, these will become quavers or eighth notes. We lose a beam there. So I'm just going to copy those note heads. You can't see the top of the page now, but you can refer to it in your copy. I'll just do the note heads first, and then we'll think about the beams again. So it's still got to be dotted. We can't change the rhythmic effect at all. D, C, B, A. Okay, so this one was um, a quaver, dotted quaver or eighth note, so it becomes a crotchet or quarter note. These two were uh, demi-semis, so they become semis. Or, oh, that went a bit wonky. Or 30 second notes. There we go. Use a ruler, perhaps. So, same principle, that becomes a dotted crotchet or a dotted quarter note. And so these two now become semis semiquavers, or sixteenth notes, and then these were semiquavers, so now those are going to become quavers, so we can pop all of those together. I think I'll use a ruler for that. There we go. That's that, and then I suppose we could just finish off by including the slur just to add the final detail. There we go. Let's just look over the page here at this next question. So page 23, um, just some general questions. We'll look at this last section. 
So answer true or false to the following statement. So these are just general questions now. The violin always uses the treble clef. This is true. It's the viola that uses the alto clef. And so now, name the highest sounding and lowest sounding members of the standard orchestral woodwind family. The highest really is uh, the piccolo. However, you would be um, okay to just say flute as well. Um, there's always a flute. There isn't always a piccolo part, but uh, that would be the highest. So either of those will do. The lowest is the bassoon. Or you could be um, correct in also saying the double bassoon, which transposes an octave lower, I think. <clears throat> Okie dokie, underline two instruments from the list below that might be played arco. So that means with a bow. So clarinet and bass drum, of course, wouldn't have bow. You're looking for string instruments that you could use the bow with. And so it's got to be the viola and the double bass. And that's that. So I hope that's been helpful to you. I do hope that you're enjoying this as much as I am. I really do like getting stuck into the nitty gritty of these theory papers. It's quite satisfying once you get the, the hang of it. And if you can give me a like, that'd be really encouraging to me. And do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more in store. Please do visit SharonBill.com and make use of all of the information there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.